Welcome back to another episode of Collider Jedi Council. I am Christian Harloff, a.k.a. Darth Harloff, and guess what this is? Our Star Wars show, hence Jedi Council. Whee! That's right. We. What a council we have today. <laughs> We're going to be talking everything going on in the world of Star Wars, and it is a stacked council first. There she is, playing the role of Mark Ellis today. It is the Smith Lord, it's Tiffany me! Smith. Uh, I'm just going to forewarn everyone as we start this show. Christian and I have been stuck in a house together uh, at Sundance for about five days. Yes. So we might have a shorthand or an awkwardness, or I might make fun of him a lot. I don't know. Probably all of that. Next to her <laughs> on her right, he is Obi John Kenobi, John Campia. Hello, John. And apparently there were no showers. Uh, he has not showered in five nope. days. Ew. 20. You could sense 20 his days. presence the moment he came into the studio. I can smell your presence. And finally, the reactor has come back to Collider. It is Tyrone Magnus, <laughs> a.k.a. Darth Tyronis. What's up, man? I'm doing good. <laughs> it's nice no. to have you here. Thank you. Thanks for coming, man. Happy to be on the show. <laughs> um, okay, so we are going to be talking everything first in the world of Star Wars movie news. This is everything that's happening in the world of the movies. It could be episode seven, eight, nine, Rogue One, whatever. We're going to talk about it here. Tiffany, what is up first? So first up, we want to talk about Bob Iger clarifying that there are the release schedule for the Star Wars films and the fact that the Boba Fett film is on hold, is not in the mix. We don't necessarily know. We don't know if this is a slip up where he said basically that there were just five films in development, including episode seven, um, that there will be more, but we don't know how many or when. So Christian, what does this news mean for you? I'm hopeful that this means no more Boba Fett movie. I want a Boba Fett uh, Netflix series, and that's all I want from Boba Fett. I want an mm. uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi trilogy film, a trilogy set of films. That's what I want. I want John Favreau directing, and I hope that's kind of where, like, there are other things in development, but nothing set, because I think that's the reason why we haven't set a Boba Fett, because they're not confident yet to roll out the gate with that one. I love the fact that he's like, okay, eight's coming, nine's coming, Han Solo's coming, those are the ones, and there will be tons of movies down the line. I think it's great that he says that I think in his confidence I think everyone knew that already but I don't know Tyrone you hear this news that we first of all no confirmation on the Boba Fett movie mm -hmm. and but we are getting more and more Star Wars what stands out to you I personally think there's gonna be a lot of fans mad mad about not having mad. Boba yeah okay you know, he has that big following that subculture so it's kind of like I don't know, you know, I mean, now I'm behind the Netflix series. If he had a Netflix series, I'd definitely watch it, but I think his fans want a movie, so if he doesn't get it, you're going to get some outcry, I think. What do you think, John? Hot damn, I do not want a Boba Fett movie. <laughs> I do not want a Boba Fett Netflix series. I like Boba Fett because he is mysterious and is that air of mystery that gives him his coolness. And to go into a, a movie that just focuses on him, seeing him pay his bills, bringing milk, blue milk home to his wife, all that kind of stuff. I don't want to see behind the helmet. I don't want to see it. Use him in the Star Wars universe. You have him appear, but I think that's when he'd be his most effective. So I'm one of those guys, I know there's a lot of Star Wars fans that really disagree with me, but I'm one of those guys that I would love for them to leave Boba Fett alone. Tip? It makes me kind of question what they had with Trank to begin with, because he was in the mix to come in and do the film, and then obviously whatever happened at Star Wars Celebration, Years to come, we'll probably find out the whole story. Fantastic of, Four happened. Well, yeah. but, but it was before that. <laughs> yeah, they, heard, mean, they heard things. But they still, things. it's like that, what was the film that heard he was going to do? <laughs> yeah, rumblings for sure. There's a disturbance. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. But so what that film was that they were going to do with him, that's what makes me curious. Because does that mean that it was a Boba Fett film? And they're like, ah, we just got nervous because of what happened with Trank. And yeah. now maybe we'll see if we can make it into a TV show. Or is it... We need to find the right director. We still have that project in the works, but we don't want to put it out too early. I think it's all of that. I think it's a matter of them saying because I'm a genius, maybe. But I think, <laughs> but I think that it, I literally think that they they said, you know what? We don't have the right director for this yet. We we have to focus on Han Solo first of all. This movie doesn't come out until 2020, mm -hmm. or whatever. So we have some yeah. time to wait. Well, what are the five? We got episode eight. We got, got episode, episode nine. We got Han Solo. We got Rogue, Rogue One. One and. I thought he said there was a fifth. Fifth, but he's counting episode but he's seven. Oh, but he's counting Force episode Awakens. seven? All right. Yeah, he's, saying, he's saying right now there are yeah. five Star yeah. Wars movies. But the other thing that Iger said that I think we all knew was the fact that we're going to continue to get more Star Wars movies. Now, how many? Who knows? What I took away from that statement, him going, we'll see. Meaning, as long as they're making tons of cash, they're going to still keep making them. Sure. Now, do you guys think that we're getting, John, start with you, in regards to episodes 10, 11, and 12? Hmm. 
Do I think we're getting them? Yeah. I think they've already started talking about them. 10, 10 11, 12. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, there's, there's no way. Look, the only way that 10, 11, and 12 are not going to happen is if, even if Rogue One bombs, unless Rogue One is not going to bomb, it's no. not going to make the money that The Force Awakens made. Understandable. But even if Rogue One bombed, they won't care. They're, they're Because they'll still believe that Episode 8 is going to be huge. Now, if Episode 8 mm -hmm. and Episode 9 go on a downward trajectory as far as public interest and the amount of box office makes. And let's say, let's say episode eight makes $800 million and then episode nine makes $500 million. If that were to happen, maybe you'll see them pump the brakes right. a little bit, but let's be honest, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Both those movies are going to make a billion yeah, dollars each minimum. So yeah, we're going to see 10, 11 and 12 sooner than I think a lot of people think. What do you think Tyrone? 10, 11, 12 going to happen. Uh, you think soon 10 years? I think the way they're going is going to be soon, you know, especially with the way the last movie did. Yeah. And, and still doing well. So, yeah. It's coming. Right. It's coming. And, and, yeah. and, you know, and they're not going to skip a year. Yeah. We're going to get one Star Wars movie every year from now until the day my grandkids go to college. Yeah. I don't know, because I feel like it's something where you <laughs> yeah. look at what Marvel did with Avengers and then the in, like the in-between films, which I guess would be equivalent to the anthology or Star Wars story films, whatever we're deciding to call them. Um, but I feel like it, I wouldn't be upset. Obviously, I want to see Star Wars, but I wouldn't be upset if there was a little bit of a break between one trilogy to the next. I don't necessarily, because then it's not going to feel like a trilogy to me. It's I've like had 20 <laughs> years of break. I've had 15 <laughs> years of buffer. I don't need any more. But I'm not saying you're not going to have the anthology <laughs> or Star Wars stories <laughs> films in the in-between time. I just feel like it's like if, if it's a trilogy, then there has to be some pause afterwards, because then it's not a trilogy. If the next three come out right after, then it's just... Three, three, and then another three. I don't know. It would be two years. It would be two I don't years know. in between. Come yeah. on. All right, Tiff, what's next? All right, so our next story, as we're talking about the Star Wars stories and anthology films, some rumors have started spilling out about Rogue One. Um, we always get a lot of our news, you guys, from Star Wars Net, StarWarsNewsNet.com. This story is actually a piece together from Joe Blow and Making Star Wars. They both posted some Star Wars Rogue One info. I'm going to run through a couple things really quickly yeah, here. Really yeah, warning, yeah, though. I want to oh, warning. Yeah, spoiler. Just a warning to you guys. Possible. To, we don't know yet. Now, these could be big spoilers. They could be minor spoilers, but we wanted to give you guys a chance because some people like, I don't want to hear about it. Why are you talking about it? Well, there's your warning. And everyone who doesn't want to hear about it says it in that voice. That's right. And if you don't want to, <laughs> shave your head and go to sleep. All right, here oh, we go. <laughs> okay, so a couple of them quickly, and then we'll get into them more in depth. Uh, Death Troopers. They're not called Shadow Troopers, like what we thought from the Legacy <clears throat> line. They're in the troopers in black suits. Um, there is going to be a very funny droid that is rumored to possibly be played by Alan Tudyk. Um, right. There is a name reveal, Cashin. Uh, new TIE fighter design, and of course, there are going to be ad -ats in this film. Um, and the biggest one is that we are getting Darth Vader, and that it is going to be a big role in this film. That the suit has been made, and stunt suits have also been made for Darth Vader as well. Um, so I think that's a ton of stuff. Christian, where do you want to jump in on that? I'm going to start with Vader, man. Why not? Because, like, and there's other things that have been people have been talking about with Vader, and that's that he's going to have some action scenes. And then after reading Battlefront, yes. Please Can't give wait. me Vader Can't action wait. scenes. Let me see the Vader that I always wanted to see, like in the prequels, him cutting people down. If you get to that scene in Alexander Freed's book, in that novel, in Battlefront, and he's tearing down rebels in Hoth, you're like, where is that dude against the rebels? I want to see him on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. When you play Battlefront and you're playing as Vader and you're just mowing people down, you're in the dark side. You're part of it. And watching him do that, I can't wait. And hearing James Earl Jones is coming back, yes, please. However, I don't want him to overtake the film. I don't. I, Rogue right. One needs to stand on its right. own, and right. Rogue One needs to introduce me to Felicity Jones and all these new characters to make me care about them, and not just say, "Okay, great, where's Vader?" Because that is the the problem that you have by having too much Vader. What do you think? Give me all the Vader you can give me, man. And because here's, this is one of those rare situations, right? Yeah. Like one of the big complaints about the prequels is, man, they show they shoehorn forced us C three PO. They shoehorn forced an R two D two. Any little reference they could do. This is the only true, wonderful, abundant opportunity where this isn't forcing him in. Mm -hmm. This totally makes sense that right. he would be right. there and have a big role to play. And since this is probably the last film that you can do that. You ride that horse, man, all the way. I mean, look, I don't want to see him lose screen time for a Jar Jar comedy robot right, droid. Right. I, even if it is Alan Tudyk, That's and I true. love Alan Tudyk, but even if that is the case, I, I, like that makes me a little bit nervous. Bringing Vader in, 
stands so head and shoulders above everything else to me because it makes sense. It flows with the story. It's appropriate. And it's going to be freaking awesome because they're getting James Earl Jones back. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm super stoked for that. Tyrone, out of all the stuff that you hear so far that Tiffany said, whether it be about the new TIE Fighters or the droid, I'm assuming Vader's the one that stands out. Of course. What is it, <laughs> <laughs> what is it about, about Vader that you want to see in Rogue One? Well, it's, it's definitely Vader. My big thing is because... I'm I'm a fanboy for the lightsaber duels. That's my oh thing. yes. So, um, we know what the duels looked like in the first movies, right. but then when the prequels came, even though they really weren't that good, the movies weren't that good. The duels were off the chain. Oh, yeah. I really Thank loved you. them. Thank I loved you. them. It's not that they weren't I good. Loved they're, they're, them. Very they're very choreographed. They're very choreographed. I love the finesse. Yes. The power. The precision in it. And I did see your review of the. Yeah. <laughs> so I know what you're, Three, two, I know you're one, talking go, about. Go, go, duck. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I want to see Vader fight just like that. Okay. Because you don't want to see him count fighting. Count you fighting. Like you know, one, two, three, oh, no, 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 no. Powerful. Exactly. Nimble, fast. You know, I, I don't want to see the whole, you know. Just and that's the yeah. trick, though, right? Thing, because. You know? What our vision of what we've always seen of Vader is very strong, but lumber, almost a Frankenstein, yeah. slow, yes. lumbering, vroom, yeah. vroom. But what you see right. in Battlefront, what Rebels. you read, what you see in Rebels, and what you read in like Lords, Lords of, of the, the Sith, Sith yeah. you see a fast, I like the word you use, yeah. nimble. You, say, you right. see this dude, and you hear about him using the force to enhance his speed mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. I right. want to see that badass. Yeah. That's the dude yeah. I'm waiting for. I want to see. see Lords of the Sith Vader for sure. Yeah. I want to see that Battlefront Vader, man. I'm telling you, yep. when yeah. you read that scene or listen to the audiobook of Vader when he shows up. He's only in that one part in Hoth, but he is terrifying. I want terrifying Vader, and I want to see what they're really up for because there has to be stakes of when they go to get the Death Star plans. Yep. And what bigger stakes than him? I mean, yep. even the Emperor, uh, great. Wherever the Emperor is, you know, cutting gas somewhere, <laughs> that's fine. We need, we need Vader to okay. be the guy. And I okay. want him to have the eight track player still attached to his chest. You should. Yep. That's got to be there. Yep. All right, Tiffany, what's next? Oh, wait. But you're, you're I didn't Vader. Even get to say. I know, I forgot. You're, you're all Vader. Vader. Move uh, on. The, yes. the, the funny <laughs> droid thing excites me, actually. Yeah. I know you said you're a little bit worried about it, but I don't think we're going to get another Jar Jar. I think from seeing The Force Awakens and what Finn brings to it and Poe and the comedy that's yeah. mixed in there, I think that we're going to get an even better version of C-3PO. Um, and they said some stuff where they're like, that's why Alan Tudyk's not in the poster that we saw. And I'm like, there are some characters and some like figures in that picture that we don't know what yeah. they are. That right. could possibly the mo be the motion capture character that he's playing, we don't know. Um, and I love him and I don't think they would waste him in that way. And I think he is smart enough to know when to take on a role that would be funny or not. And we're not sure that that's actually what he's playing or not. You know but what? obviously, Vader, yeah, I'm super Forget pumped. him. No, he's not He's not smart enough because you know why? Because Alan Tudyk is a massive Star Wars fan. And like, anyways, you could have told me I was going to play. John, how would you like to play Jar Jar Binks's little cousin, Poo Poo? You would not <laughs> do it. You, no, you damn you right would I would not. do it. You I would, would hate not. myself. I'll hate myself later. I got to be in a Star Wars movie. Poop, you poop, would or not. Poop, 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 poop. Poop, poop, poop. I like poop, 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 poop. This droid is a... It's an ex Empire droid, right? Yeah, it's an ex Empire droid, right. is what it's rumored. That's kind so of I think oh, I be, did yeah, that a different part. take. Yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 that's, yeah. that changes it a bit. Yeah. You're right. Um, yeah. And and also, what reminds me of Dennis and I were just talking about this. this yes, about all poop, we, poop, 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 poop. <laughs> uh, all we talk about at lunch, um, everything is Star Wars, and we were just talking about HK47, who was yep. one of the best droids of all time in Knights of the Republic, and. I want to see a droid like that. And it kind of seems like that's where they're kind of maybe hopefully pulling. Could be going, yeah. Mm. Yeah, because who's to say that Poop Poop here is, is exactly <laughs> the is the type of droid that's not going to, you know, be a mole poop, or something. Poop awesomeness all over the movie. Maybe. <laughs> now, you know what? And I also wouldn't mind seeing, I mean, this is getting up, but going back into other stuff about canon, look, the two homicidal maniac droids in, in Vader. Vader yeah. I mean, those guys surprised me. I, I would yeah. kind of be kind of cool to see these guys. On By screen. the way, off topic for a second. The, speaking of the little the R two droid um, in the Rebels trailer, in the, in the Rebels trailer, is that the one from Vader? That was my first yeah. thought. Yeah, I don't know if that's the case, but seeing you know the two in. the two R two kind of units going off on it, if it is a tie in, that's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So what's next? Okay, so our next story is Rogue One costumes are on display at a toy fair in Nuremberg. 
Nuremberg, Nuremberg, Nuremberg. Nuremberg in Germany. I'll just say in Germany. Sorry, guys. Um, but these costumes, I mean, we're obviously what we think we're seeing here is Diego Luna's costume, Felicity yeah. Jones costume, Donnie Yen's costume. Um, Tell and me then, that doesn't look like a Han Solo I was gonna, costume. I was the first thing oh, totally I was thinking. Yeah. It, it looks like my coat from Sundance, by the way. I, yeah. And I love Donnie Yen's costume, seeing it that way looks so cool oh what's the one on the far right who's that I, like a bounty that's hunter. the Mike Tyson yeah. one he comes out and fights Donnie uh, no! Okay. Yes. no it's it man that does right into Rogue One <laughs> it's a spin off um, but the cool thing about this is a fan tweeted these pictures before the actual event opened up it looks um, like it yeah so we got to see some of the stuff close up before the toy fair actually opened they did this with the Force Awakens costumes as well which for me getting to see those up close before we heard a lot about the movie was so cool Christian what do you think of this I love these costumes and I think it is exactly what I want these costumes to look like in regards to the feel. I mean, it, it, first of all, like you said, does look like Han Solo, mm -hmm. does look like his rebellion jacket from Empire Strikes Back, right. and it also it gives you more of that feel of the original trilogy leading up to what we know is the original trilogy here. I still want to know what the hell that thing is. It looks like a, like a bounty hunter. So speaking of Diego Luna, by the way, one of the things. Oh, man. Tiffany and I got to speak to Diego Luna. That's at, right. At um, Sundance. He was there camera. promoting his film, Mr. Pig. Yeah, he was talking about Mr. Pig. And off camera, I was like, because he, he, we had just finished interviewing him for the movie. And he kept walking by afterwards saying, thank you, thank you so much. We had a really good time. And, I'm, and in my head, I'm going, ask him about Rogue One. <laughs> ask him. And I can't let him go by. Yeah. And I'm like, if he comes back again, I, I just, it's, it's fate. I got to ask him. So he comes by, I go, I'm really looking forward to Rogue One. And he goes, oh, me too, me too. And, he, and, and as I, soon as I hear it, my ears are like, She just ah! appears like, like a I'm job. In, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Yeah, out of nowhere. <laughs> and she pops, she pops up there and we're all, all asking questions to him. And he he didn't really give us any information. No. But what but what he said was that he had such a great time like kind of filming and how excited he was, how he felt like a kid, the way that he was doing it, and how great Disney has been as uh, being secretive about it. And he liked that about For the Force Awakens. He's and like, that really, doing, you shoot it. And then that's it. And that's He's it. like, you don't hear the extra stuff. They're very secretive. But the, the best part about it, mm. I think, was he is he was very enthusiastic about his film, obviously. But there is something about Star Wars, whether you're an he actor in it or he not, as soon as we brought it up to him, it was like, he was like, oh, man. And his publicist kept come, coming over to try and be like, it's time to go, Diego. It's time to yeah. go. And he was like, and then this happened. And we're so excited. And, blah, blah, blah. and we're yeah. like, yes. Yeah. You know what that really confirms, too? Cause I remember when um, John Boyega and the first trailer for uh, The Force Awakens came yeah. out. And that reaction video, you know the one we're talking about, where you see he John Wayne walking. Like yeah. 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 A lot of yeah. people are saying, yeah. oh, come on, man, that's fake. <laughs> he's seen that trailer before. I'm telling you, yeah. that confirms. That was the first time he saw himself yeah. with a lightsaber in his hand. Yeah, easily. That, yeah. that reaction was 100% yeah. legit. And that what uh, Luna just said kind of confirms that. Well, what? and I think, too, sometimes it's that maybe it's not necessarily the day that we saw it. There's a chance that he shot that video like they gave him the trailer a little bit earlier than we saw right. it. But I do believe it's the first mm, time yeah. that he saw himself like well, that. Jump back to these costumes real quick, Tiff. What do you think? Um, I I think they all look so cool. I think they look exactly the way that I wanted them to look. I wish that I could see them in person because I think that is something where when you get to see them up close, there's so much stuff you can analyze on them. I remember when we saw you know some of the flame troopers and the snow troopers at the, which one was it at? WonderCon? Was it a celebration? No. Oh no! Afterwards, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, when was I think that? it was. A, I can't remember if it was at WonderCon or it was definitely not. D twenty three. Oh, at it was D twenty three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. WonderCon's next month. Right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. seeing them up close like that, there's so much more detail that you can analyze and look at, which I love doing. Which you can get a bit here in the photos, but I wish I could go to Germany to check them out. These costumes are lame. You think that you're out of your mind? <laughs> no. You don't think they're lame. What? I, I think they're you lame. You don't think they're lame. I think they're lame. You're lying. And I think no, I, and I think they're kind of shoddy. And I think Watch, shave comes. your head and go no, to no, sleep. No, 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 now the reveal's no, 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 coming. No, no, the no, reveal's no, coming. But, but but that being said, that is what they should be. This is supposed. This isn't an elite military unit. This isn't an organized rebellion alliance. But the costumes this, look cool. But why are they is, lame? This is supposed to be ragtag, <laughs> right. kind of gritty from the gutters, kind of uh, like uh, resistance fighters, and that's what it would look like. So and so while I think cheap, it's lame not, and cheap and yeah. all that kind of stuff. But that's the way it should be. Okay. So I actually quite like. I knew. I don't know. These go. look cheap. But yeah. I don't look at these. Oh my gosh, these costumes look cool. No, no they, they look, look like bad Star Wars. Tone. It, fits it fits the tone. It fits the tone. Where do you stand? Well, I mean, the one on the far left is most familiar to me. It right. looks yeah. familiar. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. But um, as a whole, I mean, they're all right to me. You know, I'm not gonna say like, oh my god. You did should you shave your head and go to Did you see them? <laughs> did you see the costumes? I'm not gonna say that. Um, it's interesting. What do you think? You think that's a bounty hunter? 
I mean, I, I don't know easy what it is. Oven timer on his chest. It looks yeah. like maybe, looks like maybe a pilot. A like you see the suit. The like it looks like I think it's a pilot or something. Or something right, what's know? next? To That's what I thought too. Yeah. I thought it might be a pilot. Some type of pilot. <laughs> we'll see. I, I mean, I think hearing that too, but seeing the costumes in these kind of photos is so different than seeing them on film because even from that shot that we saw of the cast, mm -hmm. they don't look cheap to me. Those costumes look badass, and they still look badass to me. I'm with you. I think they look badass, and I also think to me like it sets the tone. It also shows me. Even even that look that's Donnie Yen where so with the red pants yeah. right mm -hmm. he like he's gonna be like this s old school. I sensei. cannot wait to see him oh, in this movie. Me too. It's gonna be me so, too. Cool. so I mean yeah. that that alone gets me excited knowing that that this these this group is that Diego Luna's costume the Han Solo one it looks yeah, like that's it right yes yeah. okay so I, I'm on board I think the costumes are amazing and sets the tone for exactly what the movie is gonna be. Um, you guys are nuts. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so on to our next story. Alan Tudyk has been talking about Rogue One, obviously not revealing too much, but we do know that he did motion capture performance, um, that he was talking with Comic Book Resource a little bit about it, and what I think was so cool about it, and kind of jumping off of what you said earlier, John, obviously Alan is a big fan and he just wanted to be a part of it, so he, I believe it was Con Man that he was shooting, right. or had finished shooting, he would have a 12-hour day on set with Star Wars, and then watch the dailies from Con Man and then go back to set in the morning. So this guy was so committed to Star Wars and his other project that it's like, I'm not gonna give up on anything, I'm gonna make this work. And I know there had been rumors in the past that there could have been some scheduling conflicts with him to be able to do this film, but he made it work because it's Star Wars. Well, I think it goes back to what John was just saying. He's a diehard Star Wars yeah. fan. Yeah. And going back to the poop poop, poop, poop. Um, I think that you go, you you jump at the choice, especially if you're an actor and you're as good as he is. He's amazing. So he's yeah. gonna, I think that the fact that he, if, if it is indeed this droid and this ex-imperial droid, perfect, yeah. perfect casting for this droid because he was one of the best things in Wreck-It Ralph, by the way, too. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that... I want to see what he's going to do. And it goes back again to your quote all the time. It's never a bad thing to add talent. The fact that he's in the fact that he's they've been at I mean, most people when you talk to them seem to be diehard Star Wars fans. <laughs> when, when even, you know, even if you talk about someone like Daisy Ridley, who had never really even seen Star Wars. Yeah. And then she went back and watched and became an ultimate fan. Now, whether sometimes they're just saying it to say it or other times it's he's a true fanboy, hardcore guy like this. Um, I am so excited that he was able to maneuver some time mm. and make it work. That to me says, okay, this guy's committed to Star Wars. What do you think? Well, yeah, you make it work when it's a priority. Yeah. I mean, if you're a fanboy, you're going to make it work, oh, period. Yeah. Someone asked Can me you think of any of us movie? being yeah. offered the movie? It doesn't matter if I had my grandmother's 100th birthday. Right. <laughs> if you offer me Star Wars, you're going. it's like, hang in there, Grandma. I'll be there yeah, next right. year. Quit <laughs> like, even if I'm an actor and it's just like, you know what? I have to quit all my other jobs, never work again. At least I went out with Rogue One. Um, but do you think, are you, are you excited that Alan Tudyk's going to be in this movie? And what, what do you think about the fact that he's playing an Imperial droid? Possibly. Well, you know what? Possibly. Possibly. I'm not going to lie. At first, I didn't know who he was until I saw his face. Okay. And then I remembered him from this series that I saw a little while ago that got canceled. Is this it was Firefly? Like, Firefly? It wasn't Firefly. It was another one. Oh, I... You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it was very short-lived. Yeah, And but then it was, was in that good. little Tucker versus... And Dale versus Evil he's movie. He's always good, yeah. Yeah, yeah always, he, he was, was also sorry, in I was really nice surprised tale. at how good he was. And uh, so now I'm happy. Okay, awesome. Yeah, because yeah. I know. Although, if yeah. you put him... If there's a scene in this movie where he's flying any kind of a ship, if he says... I am a leaf on the wind. I will break down into joyful tears. That's I will cry tears. Of I joy. would not be surprised if they don't put some little firefly line so or hint subtle. or tiny because because that is the fan base. I mean, that's the thing I think when you put in a guy like this. Uh, same thing with Simon Pegg when he was in it, where it's like they are fans of the franchise and everyone knows them to be true fans. So that's why I'm not worried at all if he is the droid because I'm like, yes, he would jump at the chance to be in Star Wars, but I also think they're not going to put Alan Tudyk, whose brand is based around kind of this geek culture fandom, right. in a role that could even possibly come close to being as not excitingly cool as Jar Jar was. Yeah. Um, everybody's... <laughs> Love it. Okay, okay. Everybody's, everybody's on board. Yeah, everybody's on board. Yeah. All, right. All right. So Good. on to our next piece of news. Disney is looking for a new TV deal for the Star Wars films to air. The Spike deal, they had the films up until 2014. Um, and right now they're shopping it around. And it looks like something about... 
thirty million dollars per film for the per for the film. for the new trilogy, um, and they haven't really started discussing numbers yet, or they haven't leaked out yet for the original and the prequel films. Um, hearing that news and how much they are going for, what do you think, Christian? Thinking four point four billion was a steal for for Disney. I mean, thirty million per movie. That's just for the new trilogy. Mm-hmm. Wow. I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense. because I mean, just look at, you can imagine, like, last year on iTunes, it was the highest selling movie Mm -hmm. was Star Wars. It's like, so, Mm -hmm. and you see what The Force Awakens does. It's, Star Wars is a thing. It's magic in a bottle. It really, it's magic. Like, so where you're able, no movie has done this. You can sell one movie out of, so far right now, seven movies for 30 million. You would assume. I mean, who's going to pick it up? I mean, is it Netflix going to get it? Um, well, who, this is one of the, this is like it? the Cold War when the U.S. and Russia <laughs> yeah. were seeing who gets the nuclear bomb first, or, or U.S. and whoever who gets because yeah. nuclear- that will change the game. You got Netflix, you got Hulu, you got Amazon, and you got some other smaller players as well too. But I'm going to tell you right now, they can charge these this thirty million dollars per film because mm-hmm. they can, and each one of those three is going to be lined out because whichever one of those three, and I, I'm going to guarantee it's going to be one of those three probably Netflix, Amazon, or or who ABC. I mean, if you want to get into network too, that brings in yeah. a whole new dimension. But let's say one of those three gets it. Whichever one of those three gets it is either going to pull way ahead of the other two or make up significant ground on the other two. That's a game changer. Because yeah. if you can get on and say, hey, we're Amazon Prime and we are the exclusive home for watching the new Star Wars totally. films. I, I know if I, I'm already a Prime member. If I wasn't, I'd be buying my Prime membership like <laughs> right. that. Right. What do you That's think? True. Where, where do you think it's going to go and where do you think it, where you hope it goes? Netflix. Netflix. I'm a Netflix guy. So, yeah. um, and Netflix is huge. I think most people know Netflix more than anything personally. Mm-hmm. So... I think it's going to Netflix. When you look at, like, even going back to, like, let's say, Amazon, okay? Mm-hmm. Amazon is changing the game in general. Look, they just bought uh, Manchester by the Sea, mm-hmm. you know? Like, they're doing all, they're making mm-hmm. these big moves. It is changing the game with Amazon and Netflix. So I, th- I, I agree with Tyrone. I think that it's going to wind up being Netflix. Wouldn't be surprised if it's Amazon, yeah. but I think it's going to be Netflix, and I, I'm hoping it is too because I don't have an Amazon account. Well, and you're also <laughs> hearing that, you know, from coming out of Sundance and how much money these different companies like Amazon, like Netflix, are putting up for films that have not been seen yet by the public and don't have such a massive following. I mean, Netflix was going after Birth of a Nation for 20 million. Um, so when you hear that news, then you're like, okay, they definitely have the money that could potentially go into these films, which is why I think it's definitely gonna end up somewhere like Netflix or Amazon, where it's like they're really willing to put the money in to build their brand even more. Any shot stars or HBO gets it? Absolutely. I mean, I, I I believe it's going to be Amazon or Netflix because those me too. Uh, the, those are two very very wealthy companies right now. But so is mm-hmm. HBO. So mm-hmm. is Stars. I think somebody like Lucasfilm might give a little bit of a of a preferential nod to like a Netflix or one of one of those types of yeah. things over a Stars. But don't count them out. HBO has all the money in the world. Stars has a big reserve. Yeah. Um, and, and they're in that, the running too. And for them, for a company like Stars that is seen as being fourth, fifth place, yeah. mm-hmm. they go all mortgage their houses, build up that bankroll, bring in it, Star it Wars, puts them suddenly in the game. they're it puts in, them the in the game. game. I think exactly. when you're looking at it from mm. Disney and Lucasfilm perspective, I don't think Disney's gonna take it to a network that necessarily doesn't have more of a family, all ages vibe to it. HBO does, it, though. they have HBO family. They have, that, they have that channel. Okay, HBO, yeah. HBO has six different channels. But Stars, channels. to me, I'm like, yeah, I just, I don't, well, encore, I, I would encore, be really encore surprised family. if Stars I mean, got it. It could go anywhere, but I think that I agree with you in the fact that, like, these companies like Stars and Encore are going to mm-hmm. put in the big bids because it puts them in the game. All right, what's next? Uh, our next story, this is just a really fun one. Um, it was revealed that J.J. Abrams is actually singing during the cantina scene in Star <laughs> Wars The Force Awakens. <laughs> um, it was revealed that he worked with... Uh, writer, composer, Lin-Manuel Miranda on the music for the cantina scene in The Force Awakens. Um, And then Miranda shared that it was a collaboration between them and that JJ not only helped to co-write, but he is singing on the song as well. And then they said, if you, I mean, if you check out his IMDb for JJ, it actually has some composer, songwriter on there as well. Um, Which I guess is not just from this film, it's from uh, some other projects that he'd worked on too. So, I mean, freaking every day, it's like, JJ, you just hear something else. 
I love yeah, that Yeah, karaoke <laughs> times with Ray J.J. Cook. Abrams. Yeah. Oh, man, that would be the coolest day ever. <laughs> I, I'm, thri- I'm thrilled to hear this news yeah. because I love that damn new Cantina song. Yeah. Every time I get, I, now when I go to see it for the, uh, every time I'm like, as I know, I'm like, here comes the song, here comes the song. <laughs> I love that song. And now the fact that J.J. Abrams got involved in it, I think it's just a testament that the dude had so much fun making yeah. the movie. I think that's really what it was. And he was so involved in it. Um, so it was it was fun. You don't care what. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, looks like you I mean, care. that's neat. That's yeah. neat. But maybe, maybe, maybe the fact. And by the way, the Cantina song is not that good. But oh, maybe, I love it. it's very reggae. Maybe, although, although it's, it's better than. Yeah. Do, do, yeah. Do, 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 oh, the way Return of the Jedi one. It's way better. It's the worst. Please stop. It's the worst. But, yeah. but I was saying, maybe what the they fact. Were going with that song. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst. Yeah, it's that terrible. special edition Return of the Jedi is blasphemy. And it. It ultimately breaks Rocks down Return of the Jedi about two notches just because of that stupid but song. But maybe it's a song in there that, that is what's going to keep The Force Awakens from <laughs> catching Avatar. By the way, are the two of you finally ready to acknowledge and accept the fact that it is not going to catch Avatar? Are you, no. guys, are you at that no. point of acceptance yet? yet? No. Not yet. Really? It's only 900 million behind. I'm not, I'm not ready uh, yet. It hasn't been re-released. <laughs> because I'm still getting texts from my friends that are like, I'm going to see Star Wars Do they Star know that Wars a new Star today. Wars movie's coming out? Yes, they do. Oh, okay. <laughs> Friends who are like literally, I got a text today from a friend who's like, "I'm going to see it again at 3:45. Do you want to come?" And I was like, "Well, I'm going to be doing Jedi Council." But I got an idea. The four of us, since we got Magnus here, I think we should uh, get in front of a webcam and do our own singing rendition of oh, that Jabba Lord. Palace we song. We move out to the Yeah, I think uh, we should all sing. Uh, do you care at all <laughs> that he was? No, he's excited. I love he's I just excited. love that Christian do ignores the question. He ignores what John says. He's like. So let's move well, on. Well, no, I want to hear. I want to hear about whether or not you. Is it a cool well, thing that he did this? I mean, first of all, I don't know your thoughts in regards to you like Force Awakens, yes? Yes. And yes, and so you think JJ did a pretty great job? Yes. Okay. So how do you feel I about had my him? issues? But yeah, we I all think we all had our issues for overall, sure. Overall, it was a good job. Okay. Yeah. What did you think about him singing the Cantina song? Um, I mean, I I don't care, but it's <laughs> it's more of like um, he's got more talents than just a, being a director, right? You know, there's a lot of stars out there and you find out oh he's he spelunks you know <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh cool yeah. all right like, that's what this is okay right. cool <laughs> Your next movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he has he, the, the dude gets involved, and I, I think that it was a lot of. Fun. I think the best part about it is that you realize that JJ and we've known this, but that he is a true fan, and it wasn't you know some directors will put themselves in the movie somehow, whether it's a walkthrough scene or whatever it is. But to me, this is like he wanted to be a part of it. He was excited to be able mm-hmm. to be there, and it's like okay, I can sing this song. Let's write it, and then yeah, I'll just do the little part that I'm gonna do, and I'll always be in this film in some way. We lost Which our I budget on really the band. And we need to pay Harrison. I'll sing. <laughs> it felt like a, it almost felt like a like space. Bob Marley was singing that song. Yeah, so it's that's have what that I'm saying. That's why I, I kind love of the reggae yeah. feel to it. Um, before we move on, I'd like to thank StarWarsNewsNet.com for again putting together all these stories for all over the web um, for for Star Wars. And they also put a bunch of exclusive articles mm-hmm. that they have there. It's a great site. If you're not checking it out, you should. Um, okay, our next section simply called. What's the deal with canon? Everything that's going on in the world of Star Wars that is not the movies, but ties into the movies. Mm -hmm. It could be TV shows, novels, comic books, video games, anything that ties back into the universe. We're going to talk about it. Tiffany, what's first? Uh, So our first story is the Star Wars TV show is on hold because they are saying that they want to stay more focused on the films for now, which brings up the question, okay, you, you actually mean focus on the films, I knew that stupid clap the comics, coming. the <laughs> books, it. the serial, the whatever it is. Yeah. It's just that they're waiting on the TV show. Okay, so does this bum you out hearing this news? Yes, Campy yeah. and I are going to be in complete opposites here. I feed here. on your disappointment. I know you will. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, this, <laughs> this, to me, this to me, is, is, it's, it sucks, because I, I do want to see, I still think it's going to happen, but I think Star Star Wars is a world that is, is ripe for Netflix. I think that you can get a 10 episode daredevil type of, of show out of Star Wars. You could do it smaller. You could put it in that bounty hunter world like you did with mm-hmm. Boba Fett. I, uh, you know, like Boba Fett was going to do a movie. You make it 10 episodes and do it just like they did with Daredevil. Or you can do Game of Thrones style and put it in the Knights of the Republic and do a 10 episode arc there. I think it is absolutely a place that Star Wars should live, eventually will live. Mm-hmm. So it's a little bum. I'm a little bummed now. Um, Oh, negative one, what do you think? <laughs> this is wonderful news. This is wonderful news. This is Lucasfilm having wah, the wisdom wah, wah. to 
Oh. Stay focused on what's important, on what works. Because I'm going to tell you this. Like, everybody wants to bring up Netflix. Netflix. Don't forget, like, Daredevil's great. Jessica Jones, all that kind of stuff. Mm. But they look cheap. Because they shoot them for really small. You think Daredevil small. looks cheap? No, but, but that's not a bad thing. It looks uh. like they don't put a lot of money into it. And that's fine because that works for a show like Daredevil. Because, and Daredevil's awesome. You do a Star Wars show on Netflix. Okay, the dude who played, uh, who's the dude who played Hercules? Uh, Kevin Sorbo. What okay. was that sci-fi show he did? Oh, well, Andromeda. Was, yeah. Uh, it's going to look Battle like Star Battlestar Galactica. Battle Star Galactica. Yeah. Battle freaking <laughs> Star Galactica. But Netflix isn't putting Battlestar Galactica into their series. But that's not, that's not Star Wars. You know everyone yeah. ups their I, game with I Star just, Wars. I, yeah. I'm just saying, I think you would have to have a massive set of readjustments of expectations if you went into a Netflix series for that. I think Star Wars is successful where it is. I think it's thriving where it is. And I applaud the wisdom of Kathleen Kennedy and all of her little underlings, subjectlings who work for her at Lucasfilm to say so let's stay good. focused on what works here's what I will say if they are not ready to do the show don't push it right. I don't I want that. a show right. that's half baked that's not ready no a Stone Star so Wars would be fun though I, <laughs> with, yeah. Ke with Kevin Smith making <laughs> yeah, it yeah. Um, so I will agree with you on the I don't want them to rush something just so that they have a TV show out there but it does bum me out because I do think that there's so much in the world that just you could just say Star Wars on it. It doesn't have to be characters that we know. It could be Old Republic. It could be a totally new set of characters that we haven't met yet that I think would be awesome to see on Netflix. And I think going back to Battlestar Galactica, that show was so cheap. They didn't do it for a ton of money and it is epic and people are still watching it and talking about it. So could Star Wars do that? Absolutely. And I want to see it. Where do you stand? Well, you better agree. <laughs> <laughs> I think you both have good points because I, I'm all actually I'm all more on board with you. But most you people good, are. You, you, you made a good point <laughs> with the whole cheap thing, where some of these made-for-TV or Netflix things can tend to look cheap, and that's not something that I would do with Star Wars. But like, look at House of Cards. But I was gonna say, yep. Yeah, yeah. Netflix has done plenty of things correct, and if they can bring that, I'm all for that series. I'd mm -hmm. love to see one. To be fair you also, know. though, too, no one has ever said that it would go to Netflix. Yeah. So oh, no, it could be somewhere else. It could be ABC and, look, and it could be HBO. It could be a positive and negative. It could, it, could, it could go more towards your side as to where, like, to me, I don't want to see it on network television. I think it'll hurt I on network. With you. I think it'll be better on served on, like, HBO, mm -hmm. which has proven that they can do a show, look at Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. So right. who knows? But I have to jump off for a second because this crap article just came out that I'm not excited <laughs> about. Um, episode 8 faces possibility of additional delays due to UK lighting technician strike. This just came out mm. now. Several films being produced, again, from Star Wars News Net, uh, several, several films being produced in the UK are now facing the possibility that they may need to halt production this upcoming Saturday if their lighting technicians strike. If a deal cannot be reached by this weekend, mm. lighting technicians will not return to work and the production on big Hollywood films such as Star Wars Episode Eight and Wonder Woman will be halted. Uh, the lighting technicians who fall under the BECTU, the U UK's media and entertainment union, have not received a raise in four years and are requesting a 20% increase in pay to cover the four years they have gone without a rate increase. Um, so let's see. It, it, it just looks like there could be, I don't know, it doesn't really say how long of a break. Um, well, they'll strike until they reach strike an agreement. Until they reach, so, it, you know, does this mean that this is going to push them into 2018? What do you think? No, this is what you do. You go out, you get Alejandro no, Gonzalez in the same thing. Bring him in, go all natural revenant light. on it and shoot nothing but natural yeah. light. <laughs> or... You use your war chest of billions and billions of Disney dollars. You retrofit something back here quick. And you and they, look, if it's going to be three weeks, so be it. Right. If it looks like it's going to be three or four months, yeah. you uphaul and you get your ass back to the States. You think and they're going to do that? If, yeah, I think if, this look, if it starts to look like this is going to be a delay that will hold them up for three, four, five, six months, yeah. then yes, I think they will do that. They got too much riding on this. What do you think? Well, Disney's got more money than God. Think it yeah. this out. You, know what you I mean? think they'll it's, figure it out? Yeah, it's... Tiff? It's a minor hiccup. I, I mean, I think I think what John says is true. If it looks like it's going to be a long time, they're going to move somewhere else. They're not going to wait so long to do the movie. And I think that, you know, I don't know what the situation is with the this lighting union, but it, it, they're super freaking smart to be doing this right now because it's oh, like those leverage. are two of yeah. the biggest, biggest yeah. films people are waiting for. And the fact right. that, you know, that that's on hold and that Disney is such a big name. They want they want Disney and um, Lucasfilm and everyone to keep coming back to England. So it's like the fastest that we can get this sorted out, they're going to want to do I that. I think Tyrone's right. I think they're going to say, you know what, 
whatever it costs at this point. Let's just let's let's get this done. Let's we we but will it's not Disney that has the money. No, but, but Disney but Disney has some power. Yeah, Send me some well, yeah. clout. And yeah. Disney, Disney will use their clout. But it's still going to have to be the union of because course. they can't yeah. pay because yeah. then those guys are crossing. You know who I trust in that in that position? Bob Iger. Yeah. Yep. Hey Bob, get in that room and make this happen because no more delays for I was okay with the first delay it December's okay for me but when you put if Star Wars becomes a January movie I'm gonna shoot I can't do it I, can't I do wonder it. if they kind of had heard rumblings about it and that's why they pushed it initially I wonder if that had something to do with it that's a really good observation well it done been that. Yeah, I, that they'd yeah. already like heard that there were rumblings of this I mean they know that there was a strike so pending that back. they were like let's already get maybe ahead of this and push it forward for this strike yeah, maybe, maybe but they're, the they're supposed to start shooting like soon they're supposed to start shooting they were supposed to originally originally start shooting in January and now they're supposed to start shooting like this weekend or something too so it's going to push it back even more so, so uh, we'll see all right sorry back to canon um, so our next one is we had a new episode of Rebels, uh, and this episode for me was so much darker than anything we've ever seen on Rebels the before. The Protector of Concord Dawn is the name of the episode. There you go. Yeah. Um, and we got to see more with Kanan. We got to see more of the Mandalorians. We got to see some battles. We got to see Mandalorians. I mean, please don't accidentally say Mandalorian. <laughs> Mandalorians. Did you say Mandalorians? My bad. I did. I did. Back, I did. I said it. I said it. The Mandalorians. The Mandalorians. <laughs> I'm like getting right now. Movie. Oh god. Yeah. Um, but this episode was action packed for sure. A lot darker feel, I think, than any episode that we've seen. What did you think of this one? Well, I mean, you and I actually had a chance to watch this one together. We both, were, <laughs> as we're watching it, we, you heard, "Oh wait, who's that?" Oh, oh, the Mandalorians. I thought were one of the best things in the Clone Wars, and they were one of the best things in the in Knights of the Republic, mm -hmm. and they are so far one of the best things are Rebels because I love the way the Mandalorians were portrayed mm -hmm. here. Um, there, because it to me paid true to everything that their lore, the lore has been set up about them in the pre-existing, whether it be Legends or now, it's like, that's exactly who I knew the Mandalorians to be. They are on the side that they're on, and you can't negotiate with me right now, and if you try, I'm gonna shoot you down. But if you get a chance to talk, we can we, we can try to figure some stuff out. But even then, and I loved how that the, there was some history yeah. between Kanan and- Are we the, giving spoilers here, or are we saying- I, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't okay. go spoilers, okay, okay, but okay, there's okay. some history between Kanan and the main Mandalorian. But I know that you and David talked about it on the Rebels recap. Mm. Can you give us a little bit of your thoughts on the episode? It, it was a solid episode. I think it, it, this is one of those episodes that I would count as a setup episode, and those are needed. Some people say setup episodes are like just filler, and they yeah. no, they're no, no, no. They set you up for great stuff later. But the Mandalorian mm -hmm. stuff was great. It was very dark. I mean, they, without giving too many spoilers away, a couple of Rebel ships get destroyed, right. and what you would think is Hera would look over this way, see the ship of her wing wingmate and see the ship blow up. But they went darker than that. Before the ship blows up, they bring the camera in the cockpit. Yep. You see the pilot, Episode you see style. the flames. Yeah. yeah, you see the flames start to go up around the oh, pilot wow. and they're dis mm -hmm. they're destroyed and they die in space. It's like, that's kind of, they've been going that way yeah. with that, which is actually kind of impressive. So mm -hmm. Tyron, I know you didn't get a chance to watch this particular episode. Have you been watching Rebels in general? I haven't been. You haven't been? Okay, that's Dude. awesome. Treat, no, you don't have to apologize. Yeah, but treat, treat yourself, yourself, man. Like, okay. So yeah. what was it? And this is, I always love when we get like someone on who hasn't watched Rebels yet because I know he's a, like, a hardcore Star Wars fan. So how come, what, why have you not gone into, whether it be season one or season two, how come you've gone, you haven't gone into Rebels? What the hesitation's been? Probably just busy. Yo, you okay. Um, and to tell you the truth, uh, there's a lot of things that I just miss news on. I hear about them and mm, I'm like, oh, yeah. I got to catch that. Or that sounds familiar, but I just forget. Well, and the, I, I the know. awesome part of it is that you can now binge watch Star Wars Rebels. <laughs> yeah, on Netflix. It's so good. I don't know. If, I think uh, it'll be coming on Netflix Disney soon. Disney XD. I think so. I know it's on Google Play as well, but yeah, yeah okay. it'll be. Yeah, you should. You and should Apple. really treat yourself, especially. Have you watching? Have you ever reacted to any of the trailers, the Rebels trailers? I think I did to one of them. Okay. Oh, man. The second. We got to show him the second oh, one. The one we you know like a That's recent we'll one know. that I came out, idea. right? We'll, put, we'll, we'll set the camera up in my <laughs> office and let him watch it. If you <laughs> Isn't there a recent one that came out? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I one. may have. All right. That's, that's okay. what we'll do. Yeah, yeah, so we got Ryan right here also. We'll have the two of those guys watching. <laughs> Vader's in it, right? Vader? Uh, Vader's Vader definitely in it. Okay. All right. So what's what's next? Our next piece of news is Battlefront Editions. Some hit on the 27th of January, I believe, but there's going to be even more coming in February and March. Um, it's that EA's DICE division has clearly laid out plans for their free and paid downloadable content for Star Wars Battlefront. Um, this includes some of the things 
a Tatooine survival map. Um, we'll have the new Hoth themed outfits for Skywalker and Han Solo. Um, these are just a few things. We're gonna give players the ability to create private matches, the introduction of daily challenges and community events. This is just some of the things that they're adding to Battlefront. Um, I think it's super exciting because obviously as the game comes out, they can add more things in. They can hear what fans are wanting to play more or what additions they need or like. Um, what do you think of this news? I think it's good for the fans of the game who are really still invested in it. Yeah. Too. To be completely honest with you, I've, I've lost interest in it. Like I, when, when the game first came out, I was gung-ho for it. I was ready to play. But it, it, it doesn't have that same kind of RPG. It doesn't, it's not an RPG. So like that's, to me, the kind of games yeah. I really enjoy playing. Um, I, it, it, didn't, it didn't capture me the way that I wanted it to. So, But I do think that this is all... like. And I I know your stance on the fact that they should have done this a long time ago, but the sure, fact yeah. that they're doing it now for the fans who are playing the game, I think it's great. Personally, for me, I don't care as much, but you are, you're a gamer. Right. Um, you, you've mm -hmm. been playing Battlefront a lot, too? No. You have not? <laughs> I, thought, I thought you haven't. I thought you, you haven't played it all? I like that he nods. I thought, I thought you no. did. Uh, I played it once. Okay. Yeah. And when did you get I, bored by it? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I was left at, I was, I was saying to myself, where's the rest of the game? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people were like, no, this, that's it. And then I was finding out that so many people hated the game, and as, as, as good as it looked and sounded, it just was a letdown. So yeah, um, yeah. I, I divested myself yeah. of it after one session. Yeah, I, I, it, to me, it just Same thing. it didn't deliver. It just didn't yeah. deliver. Well, I think the thing with this game is that so much of it was built upon the fact that you are getting to play in this Star Wars world That's as Star Wars and characters that wears off eventually. flying, and and it was so the first couple times you play, you're like, ah, and then you're you like, are. okay. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go watch next. Rebels. <laughs> right. where, like, where am I, like, you're not taking me yeah. anywhere. Like, yeah. I so, be... I mean, this could help. This add all these yeah. additional things could really bring the game to another level. But that's what I'm saying. I think the people that are still invested yeah. in it and those people who are playing, I think this is a great thing for them. I think this is a fact that you just, it's more if you're still invested in it and you're still playing, and then someone says more and more, more. Oh, great, great, great! Give it to me. It's like me. I'm reading all the novels. If I had another novel tomorrow, I'd just start reading it and blast through it because I'm so invested in all of the novels. So, I think for the fans, it's great, but I think it's gonna be a little too hard to get people who weren't like us yeah, weren't it's super too little too late i think so it's too little I think too late so. yeah. okay what's next um so since we're all super gamers here apparently yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the next bit of news is imperial commando game could be coming from ea in 2017 ea is making a sequel to star wars republic commando called star wars imperial commando this is a total rumor, rumor. Total. but the thing like that Reddit. makes it seem so much more relevant is the fact that there were snap there were photos from online about information about this game that have a date on it that is the same date that EA generally does their big annual announcements. Yeah. Um, so from their presentation, so we're thinking this could be a true piece of news. Um, what do you think about this? Well, one? I've never played Star Wars Republic Commando actually too, so I, I don't know enough about the game, but I'm always up for any time a new, a new game comes, especially EA, because regardless of what you say about Battlefront, you cannot deny yeah. that- They put out some good stuff. And it yeah. feels like Star Wars. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that besides the gameplay, as far as the way it looks and the way it feels, you do feel like you're in Star Wars. Mm -hmm. So that part of it, they got right you know it's just i've just never been a fan of the battlefront games in general um but this game could be something interesting and like i said i'm always up to see what ea is going to do in regards to bringing me back into the star wars world mm -hmm. in the video games we have it's the one thing there's so many novels there's so many comics there are not a lot of games yet in the star wars world in this brand new star wars canon there are not a lot of games so bring it on i'm ready for the commando what do you say mm. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, care. look, he's got two things going against it. He's got two things going against you it. You Number being one, one of them. Maybe one. <laughs> is the, uh, the original one, I was not all that okay. enthralled with. Mm -hmm. And we're coming now off of Battlefront, which has left me going, What have you done for me lately? Yeah, what have yeah, you done for me it. lately? I mean, and even then, even before the whole new era of all the, the canon games, when you go back in, in the in the pantheon of all the Star Wars games, not many have been great. Like the massive uh, multiplayer online game of uh, uh, Old Republic, yeah, I really enjoyed that. There was uh, Knights of the Old Republic, which was great, and there were a couple nice. of other ones okay. But in oh, and then then if you go on and go real old school, the original X Wing and the original Tie oh, Fighter yeah. games. Oh my right, god, I could right. have played those till I died. But uh, it's it's at this point now, I'm over getting excited much about a new Star so Wars you're, game you're and I'm you're open that if it comes and impresses me great you're like let me see a trailer let me play the game yes okay. here's the thing though I think that's exciting about this yeah. game they are saying it's going to be more story driven yeah it's 
campaign it's driven that wanted, there's going to be a yeah, there is going to be a multiplayer component but it is much more campaign story driven um the things that they're comparing some of it to is they're saying there's some vehicles that you'll be able to use it'll be kind of like halo style which halo is one of my favorite games of yep. all time um and they also talk about the fact that there's going to be an app on your phone that you can use kind of in the same way that you can use with fallout um so i think that this game for a lot of people is going to be the one that's a bit more exciting it'll be interesting to see what time period it's taking place in again if this is actually a true story not right. just a rumor, it's a rumor off of Reddit, um, so because it's it is hard assault. when it's campaign and we're talking about canon how is it actually going to affect the story because they're also saying in here too that um the environment will be interactive so if you blow something up it actually affects everything right. else in the world of the game that you're playing okay. um so i don't know how that will play with canon Tara? um i'm kind of like luke in uh the force awakens <laughs> I disappeared from gaming for like <laughs> 10 to 15 years. Yeah. So I don't have these other comparisons that a lot of you, you have. I mean, like the last Star Wars game I played was like for Super Nintendo. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So um, but my thing is, yes, if I see a good trailer, I'll give it a shot. Right. You know, mm -hmm. so we'll, we'll see. Okay. Um, all right. Our last canon story. Our last story is the Canaan comic came out. Return. And I believe that, Christian, you read this one. I didn't have a chance to pick this one up yet, but. I did, and it just make, it makes me so bummed out that this, this line Over. is coming. That, it's got like two more issues after this, and it's coming to an end um, very soon. And this issue made me realize why I love this comic so much, and it ties back into the episode of Rebels that we just watched. Mm -hmm. um, it is a minor spoiler, so feel free to pause it or fast forward in a second here. They talked about that that thing that happened with Kanan and his master, um, and then he, they were saved by the Mandalorian. That mm -hmm. happens in this issue. It is so cool to see the way that they tied it in. It came. This issue dropped on the day that that Rebels episode came yeah. out. I thought that was so great the way that Greg Weissman um, coordinated that with Lucasfilm, and it also yeah. shows what they're doing in the new canon. That they're working with their artists and their story to say, okay, we're doing we're dropping this mm -hmm. on. Uh, on Rebels, so make sure that that's when this issue should come out. It all coordinated really well, and it also shows, again, where Kanan is coming to, where, where he is, the guy that we know today in the story, and how he got there, and what kind of Padawan he was. So I love, and, I, and I've been telling you guys about this. This is one of my favorite comic series that's out there right now. It's only going to go to about issue 12 or 13. Go back, check it out. Um, Freddie Prince Jr. himself says he reads his kids this comic book <laughs> before they go to sleep. So it's mm -hmm. um, it's awesome. It's it's a it's a must read. Well, I think that's when you talk about Star Wars being magic, where it's something like that perfect moment where the episode of Rebels airs, the comic drops, you get a little bit extra here. But if you're only watching Rebels, you don't miss out if you're not reading the comic no. book. But if you read the comic book and you watch Rebels, then it's like this magical moment of them crossing over and you're like, this is the coolest thing ever. 100%. Um, so that's it. So go Good check that, that, that out. <laughs> 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 so that was the deal with Canon. Um, and now we get to hear from you guys. You guys have been submitting Twitter questions throughout the weeks, hashtagging it Collider Jedi Council. We go through them. We pick them. We answer them. Tiffany, what's up first? Our first one is from David Hoskins, and he asks, Episode 8, moving to December. Doesn't mean Star Wars is a December franchise just yet, right? Well, we don't know if it's going to be a 2017 franchise yeah. at this point. Yeah. Um, and then he asks that Han Solo and the, uh, sorry, episode 10 may have. Uh, nine. Nine. Yep. yep. I told you I'm going to be losing <laughs> today. Midichlorians. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the midichlorians. The midichlorian episode dates. nine may have May dates. I think that episode nine has already has, I mean, excuse me, episode nine. Uh, Han Solo, I think, has a December date already. Um, but episode nine, don't. I don't think it's going to stay at May. I think that I think Star Wars is going to become a December franchise, especially now that they moved eight. Mm -hmm. I think that you could have sold me on the fact that it's going to go back to May and stay at May because it was a one time jump. But mm -hmm. I think because they have proven that December was a gold mine if you put the right property there and I think that they're going to continue to do that and I'm okay with it. I think it's a holiday kind of experience for families as well too so I think Star Wars should become a December franchise and it also goes to the one a year directly a year instead yeah. of like year and a half two years yeah. you know so what do you think i mean i think the fact that it's a december movie i love that i think that especially when you look at how films have been being released 
summer films starting so much earlier, the summer blockbusters, that I'm like, I don't, I want Star Wars to be its own thing. I want Star Wars to be at a time where I can just focus on Star Wars and I'm not being overwhelmed by all the big blockbusters that are coming out even earlier for the summer season. Um, and I think mm -hmm. that it gives you more time. I love going to see these movies with my family and people have time off and you can go see it multiple times. It's the same thing I've said before where I loved the fact that the Lord of the Rings films came out over the December season as well because then you could really have it be a family right. event. Tara? I think it works. You, you know, think it works December? Disney, family, Christmas, all, you know, just that time, I think it works. So you, you're okay with them moving away from the traditional May for, from now on? Yeah, okay. I'm fine. John? Yeah. Totally works for them. It, yeah. it really does. Now, don't get me wrong, if I'm in charge of Lucasfilm, which thank God I'm not, but if I was, <laughs> um, I, I would want it in May. I mean, that's when I want it. But I totally understand the rationale here. I mean, look what's happened already. And, and now everybody else in the industry is recognizing. I mean, Avatar's mm -hmm. already started diving for the bushes. Right. Like, Avatar's jumped off the date that they... Now, they may say it's because of this and that and the other thing. But let's be honest. It's because they know now Star Wars movies are coming out in December. Yeah, and they yeah. don't want to have to go against that. Um, so it makes sense. They can own that date. December for the next 10 years can be just known in the movie mm -hmm. industry as Star the Wars. Star Wars yep. month. Yep. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay, what's next? Uh, our next one comes from JB, the movie vlog. What are the chances of Kylo Ren secretly being a good guy? This theory's been going around. This theory's been going around. Yeah. So's Gonorrhea. Tell me this. Oh my God. The, the theory's yeah. been going around that he's kind of like a double agent. And that the fact that like when he that killed his father, yes. And they said like when that whole speech that happens when he's when Han Solo and him are on the on the bridge, and he says, "I don't know if I have the strength to do it," because it's basically what they're alluding to is that he's going to go back, and he knows he has to kill Han in order to, to show full. Well, in order to show Snoke that he like, okay, wait a minute, this kid is yep. legit, and like he a is gang a, initiation, more or less, to show him, to <laughs> yeah. show him to show the fact that, that he's he is, undercover, and that way he trusts him. No. No. I don't the problem it. is that completely ignores the private conversation he has with his grandfather's severed head in his bedroom. Right. What, what they're saying is the <laughs> like, reasoning right. that they're and saying the that ashes. is because the rumor is <laughs> Vader's goal was to balance the force. You needed someone that was full full Sith but he's saying, or dark he's, side he's to not balance just it? Saying, he's not just saying, I will finish what you started. He's mm -hmm. saying... I'm feeling it again. The pull of the light. Show me again the power of the darkness. You know, he's he's all in. Yeah, he's, he's talking, and he's talking by himself yeah. in a room. It's not yeah. like you know, he's not talking to us, and yeah. he's he's by himself. That's what he's saying. He's conflicted. It's tearing him apart. But I think there's no way he's a double agent, and I actually no. would dislike it if he was. I yeah. know. Yeah. I'm. He's disturbed. There's no way something's yeah. wrong with him. Because <laughs> when I talk you know. to my grandfather's severed head, it's hard, it's it's real. Right. It's all real. Right, right. Yes. I don't know if I, I don't think that he's a double agent. Do I think that there is still a chance that he will come to the light side at some point during the franchise? There's I could no see that happening. It. I know. I, we're going to get, get, get into that. No, we're we're going we're gonna to get into that. No, I'm sorry. Gonna, I, wait, I think, actually, no. You know what? No, I, I, you're, right, we, you're right. Wait, and we talked, right. Christian and I talked about this this week because he said the same thing. And I said to him, I was like, here's the deal, though. If there is something that we have a flashback that Han knows what the ultimate goal was with Kylo, and there's a conversation that we see Han Solo have that he's like, this may be what happens because of whatever xyz yeah but here's the that thing. would be the only way i could forgive him if han solo like in a flashback they're all nodding <laughs> yeah. their heads yeah, no but, no, yeah, but, no. But, but look, I, he looks so shocked when that saber went through him he, he was did stunned. and you know and i actually watched your video when you said too like he you can't come back from killing han solo you can't yeah. because the difference is you look at how did anakin come back he killed some youngs we didn't care about killed some sand people we didn't care about on on screen you never saw him killing him even mace windu that did bother me when he killed the kids though <laughs> but you didn't. Yeah, but you like, didn't. But you didn't really ever see it. You didn't get a chance to care. Right. About yeah. You didn't care. They were just. Han, it's like you cared so. because they were kids. That's yeah. really right. all you right. cared about. Right. You didn't right. care Master because Skywalker, you were Skywalker. Right. What do we do? You die. Right. Yeah. yeah. If, you're, if you're Ellis, uh, he's Ellis is giving a standing O at that point. But it's like so. But I, I to, to me, like, I, like he never did anything. To where you were like, oh, he just took out one of our favorite characters of all time. Yeah. He just never did it. Even Mace Windu, he t Sam Jackson was in the movie, but he wasn't a guy that even Mace Windu never really attached to him the way you do when you kill Han Solo. Plus, exactly. you're a brand new character in this franchise, kid, yeah. and in your first movie, you're taking out Han Solo. Yeah. Hard to come back from that. You can yeah. easily become a very hated villain yeah. and become very and, and hated. you're a household name before the movie even comes out, and you're the guy that killed Han Solo. You're not coming back, and even if yeah. you come light at the end. I don't but care. here's the deal. If there is some way and they do it and we do come back around, dude, 
That yeah. character is going to be the coolest character yeah. of all it time. Was, if you're like, you can do an you can arc make it work. that people actually connect to, you'd be like, holy crap. It would have to be huge. You can hear me boo. Well, here's boo? the thing, though. Not right? if they Buy do it, it well, though. <laughs> when you look at Return of the Jedi, and we, we, you and I have talked about this before, right? when you go to Return mm-hmm. of the Jedi in that epic scene in the Emperor's throne room between Vader and Luke, right? Mm-hmm. Both Vader and Luke have what I call their come to Jesus moments. <laughs> Luke has the opportunity to kill his father. The Emperor's good, good, strike him down and take your father's place at my side. All this right. kind of stuff, right? So that was his moment. Right. He's tempted by the dark side. He's got his moment. He says no, turns it off. Then Vader, a few minutes later, has that same come to Jesus moment. He sees the Emperor killing his son. He looks at the mm-hmm. Emperor. He looks at his son. He looks, and then, and there we see them make their choices to me on that bridge that was Kylo Ren's come to Jesus moment but he chose the other way but Anakin did yeah. have that moment too with the, with the Mace Windu in his life, yeah. Yeah. In his life. Right. so but but and but my point is the fact that like who's who's one was more devastating when he just saw it just because we film. didn't like Mace Windu that much that's the truth <laughs> but, <laughs> I had a lot of respect yeah. for him yeah. taking out the Emperor like you, that you do I mean but <laughs> but when you watch when you watch the movies like who were you more emotionally disturbed by when yeah. they went out so Mark low. Ellis will literally run to the front of the movie theater pull out his penis and start urinating on the movie screen if they suggest that they're redeeming <laughs> Kylo Ren he will lose it I said going that going Christian and I were going to be the weirdos on today's show <laughs> <laughs> some of the stuff that has been coming out of John's mouth yeah, come, re- come on poop poop let's not do that <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, uh, oh boy what's, what's next <laughs> moving on to the next one Christian Neo says Collider Jedi Council no one has mentioned this clue who is Rey does Kylo know Finn and BB-8 escape Kylo angry plus girl equal freak out exclamation mark thoughts question mark I know what it means as I'm reading this I'm question lost. I'm more and more I'm not, confused I'm not and the reason why I'm not is because I saw and I have to find out who the dude is and I forgive me because someone sent this to me it was this YouTube theory this guy put out this video as far as why Ray was left on Jakku mm-hmm. who left her there who her dad is all that stuff now you know where I stand I'm convinced that she is Luke's kid I'm convinced this guy was also convinced that it is Luke's kid, but I thought maybe that Luke was the one who left her, maybe mm-hmm. mind wiped her and left her on Jakku. What he's saying, this guy, this theory, was that Ray was left on Jakku by Kylo Ren. And now Kylo Ren was, when you gotta remember now, Kylo Ren is 10 years older than Ray. And so when they were training, when they were able to, uh, they're both night, whether if students of Luke, Luke thought she was killed. Kylo because he couldn't bring himself still remember the battle that Kylo was having with himself where we see him yeah. still battling with light and dark that must have been a lot bigger of a battle when he was younger understandably when you're you know going into that I'm light going to the dark even Vader had it in Revenge in uh, Lords of the Sith he's experimenting with he's drugs experimenting. Yeah. Yeah. more or less <laughs> and, and so he protects, tough time. He protects her Teen years. makes more sense that Kylo Ren would have a relationship with Plot with Ungar plot, whatever. Then Luke would. Why would you leave her with the with the Junker, Simon Pegg's character? And when he does, um, and when she's discovered, that's why he says Finn and BB-8 escape with the girl angry. When he hears what girl, there's a reaction there where yeah. he flips out. It's like, oh man, the girl that I left there to protect. Could that be her? Because in the novelization, yeah. he says it is you. Yes. In the novelization. So maybe he's right, this guy. I think that it's a possibility that Kylo Ren left her on. I did, never even thought about it. And I watched this guy's theory because one of the viewers has sent it to me. It, it's a possibility. Is this is this theory nuts? Is there anyway? First of all, do you think that Ray is Luke's daughter? And if not, who do you think she is? Well, that's what I came away <laughs> thinking the first time I saw the movie, mm-hmm. but after I saw a fan theory that talked about her being the reincarnation of Vader. I was like, wait a minute, because, you know, in the movie, she touches the lightsaber, you know, she gets all these flashbacks and memories and stuff. And, you know, a half hour later, she's doing the Jedi mind trick. And it's like, come on, you're supposed to train from a child. I'll be this. And all of a sudden you have all this power. How did that happen? Well, there's the fan theory says that she's, you know, Vader reincarnated. That's the reason why she's able to tap so fast into the force. I don't know if it's true. I'm just saying. See, I think I would be. I would rather have because I've heard that theory as well too. I yeah. would rather Kylo Ren give her the mind wipe, and then she's coming back with her powers because he knows it because that, those powers have been suppressed, and they start to come out fast because he knows. He tar- turns out one random stormtrooper, and he's like, she's just discovering her powers again. Once she learns, he knows so much about her already, uh, and he's holding it saying. back. So from she smoke. used to be a Jedi. That's what I think. I think that oh, he was, they okay, were trained okay, together, okay. and then she he yeah. he hid her because he couldn't bring himself to kill her while he killed everybody yeah. else. 
Uh, Harloff, you ignorant slut. <laughs> you don't know. No, no, uh, not at all. Uh, no, I, you know, in all seriousness, except for the part about her being Luke's daughter, because she's not. Right. Um, who knows? <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Like who knows? But I don't even, think she's Luke's daughter either. Even Take if she's easy. not his daughter, even if she's not, there is still some weight to that theory. Because I like, I believe that she's not Luke Skywalker's daughter, but I do believe she's had training when she was a child. Mm -hmm. I do believe that. And so my presupposition that she is not Luke's daughter is still consistent with the fan theory. It would explain a number of things. It would explain why... Uh, you know, he's she was suddenly once she just initially taps into it, it starts coming back to her. It would explain some of the, I'm going to say at this point, apparent recognition yeah. that Kylo Ren has with her. I'm not sold that there's recognition there, but it, it's, it's possible. It's the book thing that got yeah. me. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's definitely possible. And so, if that's what it turned out to be, I would not discount this theory out of hand. I, yeah. I'm not I'm not buying into it, but I'm not going to discount it's not it crazy. either. Yeah, it's, it's not, not crazy. it's not totally I mean, crazy. I think there's a couple things. One. We still don't know for sure that it was Kylo Ren that killed everyone when they said that well, in the one vision, of, it looks like it. Well, when they say well, one Jedi one turned guy. against and killed that, everybody, sorry, they sorry, don't say. Sorry, real quick. That's where this theory stemmed by because in Ray's vision, that's where this guy started. In Ray's the vision, um, when she pops up and she sees that one knight who's about to hit her, actually, and then Kylo takes that guy out. And, and is almost protecting her in the mm -hmm. vision. That's where that stemmed from. Sorry, well, so I think going back to it, I'm like, okay, we don't necessarily, we're all assuming, I think, that it was Kylo Ren that goes crazy and kills all the Jedi, the Padawans. We don't know Part that for sure yet. If it was not him, he left, she's being trained, but they had a connection. He already knows her. And it's like, this is this is like my little cousin. I'm not sure what bloodline relation is, but they come back. She's already had training. And he's like, I can't. I can't kill her. Yeah. So yeah, mind wipe takes her somewhere else or someone else finds her because maybe he doesn't take her to Jakku. He just leaves her there, doesn't kill her. And then her memories start to come back and that's why she can tap into the force so easily. Because yeah. even in the book, they don't like they don't have her testing out the mind trick as much as they do in the film. In the book, it's like she says the thing to the stormtrooper and he does it. In the right. movie, it's like, let me try this. Hold on. Let me try it again. Because so, James Bond, you don't mind trick right, <laughs> on the first try. <laughs> You're not He's not it. that weak minded. Uh, I was I was just thinking like you save her, you can't kill her, but you can kill your father. Well, but it took him. But, but he again, was young when he, he, he did younger, that. He was, he was battling. It took him a while yeah. to be able to remember. He was battling within himself. He did, he said to Han Solo, "I don't know right. if I have the strength to do this." I Will figured he wouldn't have a problem still taking her out at the end. You know what I mean? Like it would have been he much more. Tries to get her to the aggressive. dark side. He tries to make, yeah. even yeah. then. Even then, he can't kill her. Even then, he said he, he says her to her, he, he, "He's just like he's like he's like." Let me teach you about your powers. You need a teacher. He did yeah. force Desperately. push her 50 feet in the air and yeah. slammed her head into a tree, which yeah, he knew could have killed right. us. <laughs> could have killed us. All right, what's next? Um, our next Two one left. comes from Luis E. de la Pena, and he says, Who decides what's canon and what's not? Wouldn't changing things from the source material bring problems? Well, in regards to who decides what's canon and what's not, that's the story group. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, you know, Pablo Hidalgo and uh, yeah, Kathleen Lee, Kennedy Lee and, and Leland Chi. And, and mm -hmm. there's, there's another guy I was, uh, that I need to start remembering his name because Leland Chi actually wrote back. Because someone asked me, because I know, I know some stuff, not, <laughs> nothing compared to Leland Chi and Pablo Hidalgo. And I wrote that. And, and Leland Chi wrote back and said, and that included another name. I will make sure to learn that guy's name is told. But they have a whole story Ooh. team there that puts together what is canon and what is not. And they also, they coordinate with their authors and their directors and everyone, their producers, like everyone, to know what's happening. They're, Leland, Ch Pablo Hidalgo is the guy that everyone goes to when they say, has this been done before? Can we go this way? Uh, what characters, would this character appear in this way? Because you've got to... It's all coordinated and the story group has to know. So as far as who decides what canon, that's the main thing. Now, as far as wouldn't changing things from the source material bring problems, I don't know what he means there. Do you think that that means like as far as the... The source material from expanded, uh, well, like, what, like uh, legacy, legacy, expanded kind legacy of stuff? stuff. Yeah, not if you understand that legacy stuff is no longer relevant or valid. Yeah. Right. So I mean, you could bring in Grand Admiral Thrawn at this point right. and say he's a twenty-seven-year-old blonde surfer, make him whatever uh, from the beaches do. of California. That's it, and that's, watch the internet riot. Yeah, yeah, and watch them riot, including me. <laughs> and, and then you can say, wait, that's not considered the book. That book isn't real anymore. Yeah. So they're kind of protected that way. Have you been reading any of the stuff? The or are you are you mostly you're you're the your films have you been yeah I'm okay a film guy. okay yeah that's, yeah, that's kind of like what ellis for the most part is yeah. yeah some some stuff he gets into here and there but mostly films well and i think that that then that question as far as canon goes for you 
it, do you ever get confused with canon? Because it really is just the movies. There's not stuff you're jumping in or like pulling in from other source material. Well, movies that he watches. You yeah. Know. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, the movies are my canon. So okay. it's kind of yeah. like I don't know any difference in any different. Yeah. You know? Yep. Ah, so that's, see, this is a great question, too, because we were talking to, we had lunch with our buddy Mark before, too, and he was, we, there's that trailer that pops up, and you know that Darth Maul in canon is alive. Uh, yeah, he's got okay. the mechanical. Legs okay, you just see. So, okay. so, so yeah. there are some, it's amazing yeah. though. That's what that's, that's what Star Wars like does. Star Wars yeah. is just that's what Star Wars does. Even if you yeah. don't see it, it's funny though because even if your Star Wars I just that, watches the movie, <laughs> I'm glad he's alive. Yeah, and and well, and you see that. You see that this is what it means to be a Star Wars. Means even if you're just fan of movies, somehow he yep. found out that Darth yeah. Maul's still just, alive. Yep. Yeah, somebody that true. reads them definitely told me. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, matter of fact, um, my subscribers said they're like, make sure you watch it's the Clone, Clone Wars. Wars. They're yeah. like, watch yeah. the Clone Wars. Darth Maul's back because Darth Maul's one of my favorite. He's like my Boba Fett. How everybody okay. loved Boba yeah. Fett. Yeah, that's what he is to me. So yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. So last question. Our last one is from Ross McEwen, and he says, "Do you think the Force is strong in my family?" That quote. Um, line was originally going to be in episode seven at the end. I am ready, gloves off, to get into it with Campia oh, right God. now um, because <laughs> I do think it was uh -oh. supposed to be famous in there. last words. I know, <laughs> I know, and I because I, I already know the argument. I know the argument was that no, they took that from Jedi, they put that in Jedi, and that was just to sell the movie. That's why that line was in there, but. I do think there was a reason why that line was put in there in the first place. That's why one of the reasons I'm so sold that she is Luke's daughter. I think that in the beginning of this trailer, when they set this, the tone was to reveal. I think they were going to reveal that she was his daughter from the beginning. I, I think that Luke had a little bit more to do in the beginning of this script. I even think it, when they released the script to the WGA when they were trying to get, uh, or not the WGA, when they were trying to get it nominated for awards and stuff too, in the script, the actual script, had him recognizing her or knowing her right off the bat and had a, a look of, uh, it was it was a calming, comfortable, welcoming, loving look. But just because he knows her doesn't mean that right. she's his daughter. You're 100% right. But I think that to this guy's uh, question, as far as the force is strong in my family, my father had it. I had it. My sister had it. You had it. He's talking to someone, the only person- Kylo. The only person he is talking to, he, he has any scenes with in this film is Ray. The only person. And even if there was a little bit more to do in this movie, it was with Ray. So I think that was absolutely directed to okay. her. Go ahead, John. All right, all right. Your your baseless speculation is very entertaining. <laughs> Here, we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's litter you this know. with some facts. Let's do it. The facts it's are. It's from Jedi. Just the, the facts, facts, Jack. The facts are that not only is it from Jedi, the fact is the line, you have that power to, is directed at one person and one person. This is not up for debate. It's a fact. Talia, that's who he said that to. That's who the line is intended for. He says, for. my sister has it. it but in the movie, and does. my sister has it. And then later in the conversation says, you have that power too. He says that to Leia. That is the line directed to Leia. We can speculate that he's talking to Fufu the dog. We can speculate that he's poop. talking to, or to Boo Boo, yeah, you know, Jar Jar's little cousin. We can speculate all we want, but it's baseless. The fact is, that's who the line was directed at. Now, if you want to go with this, yes, but it could have a double meaning. Okay, that's fine. In the Rogue mm -hmm. One teaser trailer that we got at Celebration, right. we hear Obi-Wan Kenobi talking about the, the, the days of the Jedi now, the before the dark times for that blah blah well then that means obi-wan kenobi is really talking to no obi-wan was talking to luke they use that as a base <laughs> of recognition mm -hmm. for for the classic oh, audience contraire, mon that's frere. all it was oh contraire mon frere <laughs> what that line oh, that they showed in rogue one did was to set up before the dark times before the empire when he says that yes but there was no new through. no there was no new but meaning it, no but it sets the tone as far as what the it movie sets it the sets tone, the tone but it doesn't but, change but the meaning it, it is still relevant to what he is saying there it's relevant, yes. but, but it doesn't change but the meaning. It, but who is he talking to? But it's not relevant. That Mom and Dad, stop fighting. <laughs> it's conversation. <laughs> Fourth block that. Ish. Um, all right. Who's crazy? <laughs> Both of you. First. Both of us. Um, and I think that... I mean, I, I Come think, on, Tyrone. I, I think he could be talking to her. I mean, the way he was looking at her at the end... It's kind of like the proud papa. She's all grown. Right. You know, his eyes were all glass, glassy and stuff. I mean, it, she definitely could be. Now, Tiffany's definitely on the other side of this. I think that this line, especially when, yes, I think it sets the tone for the film, but I think that it sets the tone also that we know Kylo is part of his family as well. Um, so he could have just been referencing him. I don't know if that line was specifically redone and we're going to see that scene happen or if it was just... Mm. Here is some 
dialogue that we are familiar with and to bring back the nostalgia and the excitement. Um, I still don't think that she's his daughter because going back to the movie, when um, <laughs> Maz Kanata is talking to her and is like, the person you're waiting for, your family is not, not coming, back. coming back. So look to the future. Look the forward. The longing you seek is not behind you. Yeah. It's ahead of you. So yep. who's to say she's not talking about her mother? It well, could she, be. She, her, she always just references family. Family. But, yeah. but, family. but that's, that's, that's yeah, a mother. Referencing family, but that would also be father. But I mean, there's a lot. I'm the first person to say, right? Because I, I totally believe she is not his daughter. But I will be ready to go. I ain't ruling that out. I mean, it's very possible that at some point we're going to find out she is his daughter, and I'll be a little surprised, but I'm not going to fall over. Because right. if you give me 50 theories about who is Ray, her being Luke's daughter is in the top five of those theories right. to me. So, I mean, it's okay. absolutely possible, but I, I still, when I look at what's in the movie and I look at these things, I, I'm still. But then right. it's Tiffany. also just like, okay, we've got Kylo Ren and he's their kid, and now we've got to have Luke Skywalker's kid. I think it's much more interesting if we get a character that maybe is, yes, tied in in some way, but isn't necessarily like, here's one Leeds kid and here's our other Leeds kid. Yeah, but it's a Skywalker story, but it, that's why I think it's going to ultimately come back to not just one evil Skywalker. It's got to come back to everyone, but it's also up to you guys. Where do you stand? On the right side with Tyrone and myself <laughs> or on the dark side with both John and Tiffany? Please comment. Tell us exactly if there's anything that we talked about today that you guys want to chime in on. Please do it. Also, if you aren't already, let all your Star Wars fans know about Collider Jedi Council. Share it on Facebook. Put it on Twitter. Let everyone know about the best Star Wars show on YouTube here. I want to, first of all, thank our <laughs> council member today. He is Darth Tyronis. Tyrone, where can the good people find you? At Tyrone Magnus on YouTube. When you're yes. looking for what? That one million, right? One million subscribers. Where are you at right now? Woo. I'm at um, six hundred like six hundred and fifty <laughs> something thousand. Six hundred fifty. Yeah. Let's nice. get Tyrone to one million subscribers. She is the Smith Lord, Tiffany Smith. Where can they find you? Uh, you guys can find me on social media at Tiffany's Tweets, um, Snapchat as well. And then this week we're back on DC Comics YouTube channel with DC All Access. So make sure you're checking that out all week. And then obviously Christian and I do movie threesome for Fandango, and you can check out all of our Sundance coverage on uh, Movie Clips Originals. And my Kylo Ren of the show, Obi John Kenobi. <laughs> Where can they find you? You can follow me on Facebook and on Twitter simply at John is right. No, uh, at John Campia. <laughs> and it's, it's funny because you know uh, my wife drops in the office every once in a while. She came in today. She's had a long day already, so she was pretty tired. She, I'm like, hey baby. She's like, hey baby, and she's like, whatever. Said, hey Tyrone Magnus is here. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's my life. I'm really really excited the time that you came in today. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks so much really for us. Make sure if you anytime. don't if you haven't watched Tyrone's videos, you really should. They are great and I'm going to try to get him to do a reaction to the Star Wars Rebels. Rebels. Yeah. yeah. So we'll look for that as well. Guys, thank you so much and you can follow me at Christian Harloff Twitter, Instagram and make sure that you hashtag Collider Jedi Council. Get your questions on the air and we will see you next week. May the force be with you always. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.